You're probably trying to decide, should I save some money and get the CU8000 or should I spend a little bit more and get the newer DU8000? When you look on paper, both of these TVs have the exact same specs. For example, both TVs use edge lit technology. Both of these TVs have three HDMI inputs. You also have the solar remote control and you do have voice command options. There's three changes that I did notice in the Samsung DU8000. For example, now it has these angle feet instead of the flat feet. The second thing is that now it has a newer operating system, which is ran by Tizen. And the third thing is that all the HDMI's on the back of it are HDMI 2.1. And don't get confused, this still is a 60 hertz television. The HDMI 2.1's allow more data to go to the TV to get better picture quality in theory. On this side of me, we have the CU8000, and on this side, we have the DU8000. Now, I will be running these TVs in the background as I pop in from time to time, but the question is, which one is worth your hard-earned money? Let's get into it. First, we're gonna take a look at these TVs in standard mode, and standard mode is not ideal for most people, but in my opinion, it makes sure that anything that's white looks white and it doesn't have that warm look. And it seems to me when you had the blue skies, the CU8000 actually looked better to me. But when I switched over to this scene, you can definitely see a difference on the DU8000 where the contrast is doing a much better job reproducing the white and the black together. And I would tell you each TV will perform differently depends on the content that you play on it. Now playing some different demos that has more color in it, some things that I notice is that now the DU8000 is standing up to the CU8000 overall and it looks like the background has more bokeh in it as well as more colors and better shadow detail than the CU8000. Now I didn't really know what to expect when I started filming these but both of these TVs are in the factory standard mode and of course you can go in and you can adjust everything manually but just from the factory to me it looks like the DU8000 is doing a much better job However, I do notice it does have a little bit more of a bluish tint than the CU8000, it depends on the scene. Now switching over to live TV, this is gonna really show us the difference whenever you're using a 720p or a 1080p signal just been broadcast through YouTube TV. And again, to me, it looks like the grass is much greener, the colors are much richer on the DU8000. Uh, it seems like the CU8000 is definitely still has some great colors, but Samsung made some huge improvements on the color science on the DU8000. I don't know if it comes down to picture preference, but for me, again, I'm still liking the color science better on the DU8000. Switching over movie mode, this is where it gets a little interesting. For example, I have this movie plan and I do notice that you lose shadow detail in the DU8000. And maybe it's because they're trying to make better contrast out of edge lit technology. There's a control knob on the scene that almost disappears on the DU8000 where you can still pick up some of it on the CU8000. And to give you a rough idea of how the picture changes, I just want to switch through some of these different picture profiles. And it might just be me, but for movies, I think the CU8000 is doing a much better job. So if you was trying to choose which one is going to be better for movies, it might be the CU8000. So here's my thoughts so far. I like the DU8000 when it comes to watching your everyday TV. Uh, it just seems like it had better color reproduction and it's just a nice looking television. But when it comes to movies, I still prefer the CU8000. It just seems like the black levels were much better. And in addition to that, it seems like the DU8000 had a little bit of backlight glow that you didn't notice in the CU8000. But this still is confusing because after playing some animation, it seems like the colors were more accurate and punchy on the DU8000. So this leaves a question mark on which TV looks better on movies, but it goes back to depending on which content that you watch. Now let's switch over to audio. I will tell you that both TVs are 20 watts by two, which is not a lot of power, but I wanna let you hear a quick little sample. And the thing that I noticed is that the CU8000 seems to be a little bit more crisper. Now keep in mind that both of these televisions are compatible with the Q-Symphony audio system and both TVs have eARC so you can hook it up to your soundbar and both TVs do have Bluetooth 5.2 just in case you wanna hook up some headphones or something like that to it. But please, 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 when it comes to Bluetooth, do not hook up your soundbars as a surround sound through Bluetooth because it's very limited and in addition to that, you're not gonna get the separation that you would get using eARC. But if you have no choice, 
I understand. So here's the operating system on both televisions. One thing I don't like is that now they add your email account to the sidebar. So if you don't want to share that, it's going to be there on the side on the DU8000. Both TVs do have a search feature, so you can use Bixby or Amazon Alexa. But one thing I want to point out here is that I really like the colors on the new interface much better. And here's the new gaming hub. You still have all the same functionality, but again, with this new interface, it just looks a lot more polished than it did before on the CU8000. Here's the home screen on both televisions, but one thing I want to point out is that now you have SmartThings application built right into the DU8000, where before on the CU8000, you had to use the application on your smart device. And you still have access to all the same applications on both televisions, so you won't be missing out anything by getting a newer TV when it comes to getting apps. Under connected device, you still have access to SmartThings, all your inputs, plus you can use external cameras on either television. Both TVs also have workspace where you can connect to your Google as well as Microsoft products. You still have the connection guide and you still have access to program a universal remote control that comes with it. Even when you go into the settings, everything's the same. You can just see that they did polish that menu system quite a bit, but it appears that all the connections and all the settings are exactly the same as far as what I can see making this video. And here's the SmartThings hub that's built into the DU8000. So if you have lights like the Philips Hue system, or if you have different devices that can hook up to your Alexa or Google devices, you can definitely use this hub built into the television to control those different devices. And there's even an automatic setting if you wanna have it to automatically find things that's around you. Now, when it comes to gaming, I would say on average, you're gonna get about 9.7 milliseconds of input lag on both televisions. Keep in mind, neither TV will support 120 hertz, even if you drop the resolution down to 1080p. The whole thing about gaming on these television is that it's gonna support 60 hertz, which a majority of the games are, so you're gonna be fine. So here's some demos so you can take a look at each one, but the main thing I want you to pay attention to is the colors, and you can tell me which one you think is the best. Welcome or not, this is where fate has determined the Sorcerer Supreme needs to be. So doing some gaming on those TVs, it felt like the same experience, but again, those color differences is something is more of a personal preference. Now the last part of this video, we're gonna do some demos. I'm just gonna show you some motion. And just in case you wanna do these demos, these are called Spears and Munsell's Disc. And these are 4K versions. So you can put these on your PlayStation or Xbox Series X, and you can kind of fine tune your television just a little bit. Now it's not a sponsored uh, piece right here, but just want to show you what I use whenever I'm doing these type of demos. So here's an all white image on both televisions. And for me, the DU8000 looks more white and on the CU8000 it has more of a kind of pinkish haze to it and again both of these TVs are in movie mode so you can kind of judge that for yourself as we go through a few of these demos and here's a contrast sweep so we go from the white levels from the grays all the way to the black levels which TV looks better to you I know both televisions are performing pretty decent again these are budget models for Samsung but I think the DU8000 is definitely doing an overall better job as far as these sweeps go. Next one, check out the motion on both TVs and keep in mind they're both powered by the Crystal UHD processor. And I want to adjust the judder down all the way down to zero so you can see the difference of the two TVs. And then we're gonna move it back up to 10. And this is gonna really control how smooth your television is, especially if you're getting that soap opera effect. And for me, they look identical as far as the motion. But if you see something different, leave a comment below but that's what I'm seeing right here. Now, last thing I want to show you on this video is some skin tone test, and we're gonna just switch through the different picture modes to see how each TV performs 
And again, all these are factory settings. I haven't did any kind of calibration or touched any of the settings in the menu systems. In my opinion, the DU8000 actually looks much better to me. When I look at the CU8000, it has more of a magenta type of look to it, but it's interesting depending on the source that you play, this just fluctuates so much. It makes it very impossible to make the best decision. But again, that's my opinion on this particular demo. So what did I think about these two TVs? I mean, the CU8000. This is a step above the 7 Series and it has some great features. And for me, overall, I think it is a great television. But I think Samsung did a much better job on the DU8000, except for a couple of things that really stood out to me. First of all, the shadow details on dark movies didn't look as good to me as the CU8000. The second thing is there is some noticeable backlight uh, sheen to it, if you will, uh, when it comes to certain content. But putting that to the side, if you really think about it, the most important thing is your everyday TV watching. And you can see that the colors pop more. The audio system is mediocre at best on both televisions. But keep in mind, if you want to get the best audio experience, you want to definitely get an external sound bar. Samsung makes some that really connects to it. So you don't even have to worry about any configuration. Just plug in the HDMI arc and you're ready to go. So if it was me buying a TV right now, money, no object, I would go with the DU8000 out of these two models. I would go with the CU8000 if you're just thinking about buying a 7 series Samsung. I will tell you that we're still working on this studio. You probably see a lot of glare, but check this out. I got this new track system that's going to allow me to hang up curtains throughout the room to darken everything so you don't see that glare as much. And the studio will be together in about a month, so it's a little bit of work, but my main thing for you guys is to always put out content that makes sense, that helps you make smart buying decisions, and to subscribe to this channel right now. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.